Welcome everybody to Low Country Sports Talk, LowCountryRadio.com. Thank you for tuning in. I got Charlie Moon on the air with me. Charlie, how you doing this evening? I'm doing all right. I'm in uh, Chili Johnson City, Tennessee, visiting family with uh, Serena and her and her family. Uh, it's not as cold up here as it uh, as it normally is when I'm up here. We, Johnson City. If you're not familiar with geography, it's Bristol Motor Speedway. I mean, I could hit a golf ball a couple drives and land right in the middle of Bristol Motor Speedway. So we're right next to the Virginia State line, uh, Tennessee, uh, Tennessee Virginia line. But uh, it's chilly, so. Once we get done here, I'm going to uh, take care of a piece of pumpkin pie and uh, grab uh, grab some moon pie, if you know what I'm talking about, sit on the back deck and, and get chilly a little bit. But I, I'm doing great. How about you guys? We're doing great, man. Hey, I know exactly where Johnson City is. I've been there at Bristol Motor Speedway several times to watch races. A good good place to hold a football game right there in the bowl uh, Bristol Motor Speedway. is. That's what I always said they should do is uh, yeah. host a football game right there and where the cars and all line up. Hey, but who we got on there with us tonight yeah. on Sports Talk? Well, we got uh, the radio radio fellas from uh, Valdosta, 95.7 The Mix. Um, uh, Ron Regan, he, he does play-by-play for Valdosta Radio. And Dirk Harrell, he handles color for uh, Valdosta. Um, so, uh, hey, guys, how you guys doing? I'm doing pretty good. I appreciate you having us on. Um, got Dirk Harrell on the line with him, with me and our stat man, Darren White, D-squared Pest Control. He's having a big low country ball tonight down here in South Georgia. So I'm sitting in okay. my truck waiting on the shrimp to get ready. Ooh, man. I'm okay. I'm, just, some low country I'm, I'm hanging out doing the same thing. I'm actually en route to D Square's house. And, uh, because it wouldn't be fair to not have the whole radio crew together. So uh, we're going to do some free Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving eating. Nice, nice. Well, tell me this. What's in your low country bowl? How do you guys do it? Well, the big thing that Darren and he got his, he's got his dad over that helps him and his mom. They put rutabagas in their low country bowl and corn <laughs> and the potatoes and the shrimp and the sausage. But the rutabagas are a big hit. You know, I've heard that before. Rutabagas. Rutabagas, yep. I've heard that before, and I, I've never tried it with that, but I'm going to have to try that sometime. Well, I can remember my uh, my granddad introduced me to rutabagas. He used to love to grow those in the in his uh, in his garden in College Park, Georgia, just south of Atlanta. And I fell in love with rutabagas, but I never knew you could put them in low country bowl. I'm going to have to try that one time. Hey, man, just get in your truck and come on down. I know you're up in Tennessee, but, man, we got three or four pots going right now. I walked up there a minute ago. And it's going to be on like Donkey Kong. Hey, it won't take me right, but about two good. hours and 40 minutes to get there. I'm over here in Richmond Hill, Georgia. Speaking of Richmond Hill, Georgia, we got this big game going on this Friday night right here in Richmond Hill at Wildcats Stadium. Uh, I know I uh, listened to the coaches' show last night. Y'all's coaches uh, are looking forward to it. I, I, I got to start off this with Valdosta has the winning winningest record of all high school football teams. And – the winningest program that is according to wikipedia y'all have a 77.73 percent win rate that is some history there there's there's definitely some history in Valdosta, but i can tell you since coach rod's taken over he came in 2010 2011 with, the, with coach rance gillespie he, as the dc and then he took over in 2016 and since coach rod has taken over he said he has he has kept the history and talked about the history, but he's told the kids said, "Look, make your own history. This is you. This ain't about your dads and your granddads. You need to make your own history and continue that history. You're part of it. You're not a piece of it." So, is there any traditions that has has stayed from day one to today that uh, Coach Allen Rod has uh, carried on? Is there any traditions, you know, like uh? I don't know, some of the college teams on the way out, they, they all touch a certain object or a, a monument or something. Is there any traditions there in Valdosta that they do? There is. Yeah, you'll, you'll notice right off the bat, that's from small things, when you see the cats come out on the field to warm up, Friday night they will uh, they warm up and they get in a huge circle that covers one whole end of the field. That's something they've done since the very beginning. Uh, also, the ramp that at our at Baysmore High or at our home field, the ramp that comes out of the locker room down onto the field has a tin roof on it. And it has been tradition forever that when the cats come down that ramp uh, in pregame, your helmet's off and you're banging the tin. You're hitting your helmet on that tin, and it sounds like a gigantic thunderstorm brewing down there in the end zone and uh, just striking that tin. And that's just a couple of the things uh, that, that go on. And it kind of gives you a, 
a connection between, you know, us when we were there, back it up when your dad was there and your granddad was there because you see the heads nod in the in the stadium uh, when it starts happening. Like, yep, that's how we did it. And it also it, it lets you know it's game time uh, right. and it's time to roll. I hear you. Well, it sounds like uh, you all got some tradition and some history there, and it looks like Coach just joined us. Uh, Coach, are you on the line with us? Yeah, this is Coach Rodemacher. How you doing? Doing great, Rod- Coach Rodemacher. Thank you for joining us tonight here on Low Country Radio uh, Sports Talk. So uh, we're just talking to uh, Ron and Derek here and Charlie Moon. we got Charlie Moon, our sports analyst here. Yeah, hey, hey Coach Rodemacher. Uh, one thing right off the bat is uh, we're both Carolina boys. Uh, you know, just finding some information uh, earlier today, last couple of days. I know you spent some time at uh, at Boiling Springs, uh, and when I saw that, I, I started remembering. Wait a minute, Boiling Springs? That's right in the area between Boiling Springs High School, Spartanburg High School, Dorman. So it's in some ways, it's almost like your career has kind of come full circle because in South, in the state of South Carolina, when you talk talk the best pocket of football in the state you know it, you know it may change every now and then but for a long time the best pocket of football in the state of south carolina was right in that little triangle dorman spartanburg Bowling springs and now look where you are what could arguably be described as, as the best pocket of football in the state of georgia in region 16a lee county coffee you guys you know, talk about that. Do you feel like that's come, you know, full circle? Have you even thought about that at all? Well, I'm a Carolina guy. Yeah, I was raised in a little town in Zabler, North Carolina, up near Raleigh, North Carolina. And I went to college at Presbyterian College and played, you know, college football there uh, back in the uh, mid-'80s. And then, of course, met my wife there and, and started my coaching career at North Greenville. It was a junior college then back in 89. And and, um, and then, you know, the second year, I, you know, we won all the games the first year. And I, I didn't know I didn't know my tail from a hole in the ground, but we, we won all our games that first year. And I thought I was some kind of great coach. And then we went to Boiling Springs. I went to graduate school and coached at Boiling Springs and got a taste of Region 2 that year. That, that was back when Spartanburg, Northwestern, Rock Hill, Dorman, Burns, all those were in the same region. And, um... You know, then I came back around in 2009 after I'd gotten out of coaching for eight years, and I reintroduced my career in Region 2, and I coached at Burns in 2009. So, very familiar with upstate football for sure. All right, next question. You uh, you a ketchup-based barbecue guy or or mustard? Be careful now. Neither one. I'm uh, I'm vinegar-based in <laughs> eastern North Carolina. Okay. We'll okay. Okay. All I want. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I, I grew up in uh, in Newberry and Batesburg, Louisville, and uh, Batesburg, of course, Batesburg, Louisville is the home of uh, Sheely's Barbecue and Heights Barbecue. Did you Did you ever find your way through Batesburg at all? Oh yeah, I've been I've been through every part of South Carolina. I love South Carolina. I tell people all the time, and I'm from North Carolina, but North Carolina's had an influx of Yankees, and I tell you, the nicest people in the world are in South Carolina. Well. uh yeah, and you, you you know you started your college coaching career at North Greenville. Uh, you guys kind of had a pipeline with the high school that I came through, at Batesburg Leesville. There were several friends, but I didn't play football. I was a baseball guy. Uh, but I had several friends of mine. Uh, now, now that I'm matching up the years that you were at North Carolina Greenville, you may have coached. There were some V Train Adams, Andy Harris, Jason Weed, Jamie Moore, se- several other guys that came through there around the time that you were there. But uh, you guys had a pretty good pipeline uh, from Batesburg Leesville High School. Um, what, uh, what things, did, if you had to put your finger on one or two things that, uh, that, that you learned in those early years that you're still, you know, still doing today? Well, I don't know if I'm staying true to everything I'm trying to. The game of football has changed so much. I, I learned from Bruce Hill and I learned from, you know, Elliot Piles was my college coach. And then I went to work for a guy named Tim Marchman for a couple of years. And then, um, Rodney, you know, certainly, uh, George Bobo and Thomas Bill and Rodney Walker, Rodney was a 300-game winner in Georgia, and, and you know, I, I've kind of been on my own, but Mike Hodges, George Bobo, Rodney Walker, those are guys, kind of the guys that, that taught me, and Tim Marchman, who I worked for first, was um, was a descendant of Rodney Walker, so I, I, it was just hard-nosed football, and spending about 100 hours a week up there at the, at the uh, field house and just grinding um, year-round and trying to trying to do as much as you can for those young people, and then I've always, seems like everywhere I've been, Thomasville, Peach County, and, and about off time, I'm dealing mostly mostly with uh, minority kids that are that are in need of um, of a father figure, and uh, certainly my high school coach was uh, was that father figure for me. So uh, anyway, um, I try to be that for all of our kids. So um, you know, for me, it's it's been a it's been a blessing, and um, certainly I've learned from some good guys. You know, 
know, um, the, then in 2000, you kind of, or 2000, was it 2000 or 2001, where you kind of took a step back from coaching, got involved in the family business. What brought you back in 09? Yeah, you know, I was, I was the head coach of Peach County in, um, in uh, the late 90s and 2000. And then, you know, I got out. Uh, I was starting a family. I had a four-year-old and had a, another one on the way. In fact, Tate, our quarterback now, was on the way. And then since then, we have, we've we got a daughter as well that's 16 years old. But, you know, I felt like I needed to provide more more finances for our, our family. And so I got into a family business up in Raleigh, telecom business. And it was certainly fruitful um, and uh made two or three times or maybe four times the money I did in, in uh, coaching and did that for eight years. But, you know, at the end of those eight years, I lost my best friend. I lost his father who basically raised me. I was from a single parent home and then I lost my mother as well. And, um, I did the eulogies at three different funerals and I told my wife, I said, sure, I don't think I was on the, put on this earth to make cold calls and, you know, make all the money in the world. I think I was put on this earth to coach high school football. So I got back in in 2009 and I've been in Valdosta since 2010. Well, you know, that's a, a, a great story. Uh, sometimes it does take, uh, life's events will, will, will send you down different paths. Um, you know, you, you mentioned Tate. I know, uh, Tate and Bo. Are both ball players? I know Bo's at Georgia Southern now, and you, of course, you know. I, I heard that Tate's kind of flicking around, flicking it around a little bit of Valdosta, you know. And I know you get asked this question all the time. I know you probably get tired of it, son. But what, what's it like coaching your coaching your son Tate? Well, both of my sons have played offense, and I'm more of a special teams defensive guy, so it's it's really been easy. I, um, you know, and I, I've loved it. I've, in the last eight years, I've coached both before, and then this is Tate's fourth year with us, and so it's really going to be strange when he when I you know when um, when he leaves, and he's actually he's leaving pretty quick because he graduates in December, and he'll be enrolling somewhere in, in January, so it's coming around pretty quick. So what I've done, you know, I can kind of feel it coming. The last six or seven weeks, me and Tate are throwing with each other before practice every day, and that's been pretty neat. But you know, it'll hit me. I, I'm not prepared for it, and probably he is not either. He's probably ready, ready to get away from home, and me and Mom are ready to keep him at home for a little bit longer. But it's been really special, and I'm sure it'll be a little bit different when they leave. But um, it's been um, – I would advise it for any other uh, coach out there. It's, it's been great fun to coach my son. As far as uh, W's, you know, you guys won a state championship a couple of years ago. Uh, if you had to put your finger on uh, a moment in time since you've been there at Valdosta – they kind of said to you and your family and the Rodemaker family, "Hey, we're in Valdosta now, and that's that that we're in Valdosta, and that that's where we belong." Um, I know the coaching coaching profession could take you to a lot of places, but if you had but if you had to put your finger on on one moment in time where you felt like I'm a Valdosta guy now, when you got there nine or ten years ago, what what would that moment be? Well, I don't know if there's a moment. I can tell you this: when I moved down here, I bought a house initially, and none of our other staff did. The last two staffs only lasted two or three years, and they were they were let go by the administration. And so I bought a house, and I, I, I knew right then, I said, they're going to have to kick me out of that Austin. Because I really <laughs> felt like the hard-nosed football in that Austin, I always want to be a part of that. I, listen, I grew up in North Carolina, and I heard about that Austin football when I was in middle school. So I, I think my whole life has been kind of headed towards that Austin. I'm just glad, glad to finally get here. And, you know, as 10 years have flown by, but I just soon end my career here because uh, football is still king here. You know, it's really important to them. And, you know, we haven't won probably as much certainly as, uh, you know, Baysmore did uh, back in the day and certainly with Hyder. But we're, um, you know, i tell you what gets me out of bed every morning is trying to live up to the tradition that Baysmore and the standard that Baysmore and Hyder set. That, that gets me up every morning and motivates me. And in turn, I motivate our kids to try to do the same thing. And so um, I just will never leave here as long as I'm coaching high school football. Well, you know, you talked about, uh, you mentioned Baysmore, Hyder, and then, of course, uh, Mike O'Brien was there between 96 and 02. He won a state title. And I know this is probably something a lot of people ask you about. Out, and you just t- kind of touched on it the last minute or two, but th- does that pressure of the past ever get to you? I know before we came on air, play by play, and you color guy you know, talked about how you guys, you know, are, are always talking to your players about uh, remember what what's gone on here. We want to bridge the gap, but you guys start making your own history. How's it been for you in the program bringing it back? I mean, you talked about having won as much, but you're you're right there on the cusp of it. How is living up to that pressure been, and how do you guys deal with it? Well, I really don't see it as pressure. Listen, you know, I, I, I could have worked in a lot of different places, and I'm not being boastful here, but I, I, I ran to Valdosta. I didn't just happen to be here. Um, Coach Gillespie 
Um, you know, asked me to go with him wherever he went, and he had two or three options. And I told him, I said, I'm not interested in option A or B, but if you go to Val Austin, I'm in. And he ended up going picking Val Austin. So I ran to Val Austin. I knew full well what it was all about. And certainly I've learned more when I, since I've gotten here how intense it is. But I don't see it as pressure. As I said before, it really is a motivating factor for me. And, and I, I, there's no place I'd rather be in high school football. And, you know, if you ever hear me leaving here, that means I'm not coaching anymore. So for me, um, I want to coach as long as I can. Peach County had some tradition, and I was the head coach there. And certain Burns High, certainly Burns High School in South Carolina has some tradition. So, and Thomasville High School had a lot of great tradition. So I've been lucky, but there's only one about Austin. And um, so about Austin is special to me. It's home to me now, and um, I'd rather be nowhere else. But I don't see it as pressure. I see it as motivation. I'll uh, kind of wrap it up with the last couple quick things here. If you had to ask a lot of coaches this leading up to a big game, uh, that game will probably be over somewhere around 10, 1030, somewhere in that little time slot. You had to have your, uh, your mental picture of what you'd be doing at that moment in time. What do you think it would be? Well, I don't care if we win two to nothing or fifty to forty nine. I just want to get a W on the board and move on to the next round. I want to go one and zero this week. And um, you know, I've learned a long time ago you don't look forward. I don't. I'm not. I don't really study brackets and all that crap. I just try to study the opponent. I tell you, <laughs> Coach Lazard and, and all these guys, Richmond Hill's got a heck of a good football team. They're well deserving of where they're at, and it's going to take our, our best effort Friday night to uh, to come out with a victory. But we, we plan on playing next week. But I can tell you this: um, I'm, uh, I'm they got 100 percent of my focus, and um, they're certainly uh, worthy of this uh, the season they're having. And you know, we're uh, we're going to try to stop Jalen Rouse is what we're going to try to do. <laughs> well, before I let you go, tomorrow's tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Uh, I know you uh, are you guys going to have a, any kind of practice at all on Thanksgiving, or how does that work? Yeah, that's the best practice of the year. You know, back when I yeah. was a younger guy, we'd practice, we'd practice that morning. And all the coaches would play uh, pick up football, and our booster club would cook all of us turkeys. Back when I was in Peach County for seven years, that was great. But awesome. now we've kind of gotten too old, and nobody wants to play anymore. But um, <laughs> we're going to practice. We're going to we're going to practice tomorrow morning at six a.m. and we're, we're going to go from six a.m. to about seven thirty and send our kids home, and then um, you know forty forty um. 48 of those guys are going to meet us back at 5 o'clock p.m. and we're going to get on a bus and go to uh, go to Brunswick and stay overnight in Brunswick and uh, do a walkthrough and all there on Friday and, and um, the rest of them will come meet us for a pregame meal on Friday at about 3.30. So um, okay. that's when my Thanksgiving is going to be. But in between that, we'll be eating very good at the Rodemaker House, I can tell you that. Well... Yeah, and, and, and I know what you mean, Coach. Like you said, I grew up in Batesburg, Leesville, and if those guys weren't playing for a state championship, then the season wasn't a success. So my Thanksgivings were filled a lot like yours are. Now, I'll ask you this last thing. Now, what's your top three in your Thanksgiving meal? If you had to put a power rating on your top three meal items for Thanksgiving, what are they going to be? Well, dressing is number one. My wife does. Oh, yes. Yeah. Does I mean you got to have dressing and you got to have you know dark meat turkey is what I like with dressing and uh, Texas Pete all over all of it. That's that's my top three right there. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, there you have, folks. Uh, Freddie, you got anything else? Yeah, Coach, uh, we appreciate you joining us here tonight on uh, Low Country Radio, and we thank you. We know you got a t- got a busy schedule, and uh, we appreciate you calling in. And uh, we'll wrap it up with you and uh, have a happy Thanksgiving, and we look forward to meeting you uh, Friday night right here in Richmond Hill. Man, it's been an honor to be home with you guys. I appreciate y'all doing this, and look forward to seeing you guys Friday. Awesome, thank All you, right, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Hey, Charlie, we'll take a short break, and we'll come back, and we'll talk to uh, Ron and Derek about a couple things, and uh, we'll finish this uh, sports talk show up. So uh, we'll be right back after these messages. The Local on 17 is the place in Richmond Hill to go for a fine dining experience at a casual price and great atmosphere. The Local on 17 offers USDA-certified prime-grade steaks and local dayboat seafood. All steaks are cut exclusively in-house. Visit the local on 17 on Highway 17 in Richmond Hill, Georgia, just off I-95 at exit 87 minutes from Savannah. The local on 17, where everyone is local. You're listening to the Richmond Hill Wildcats football on Low Country Radio. Go Wildcats! Welcome back, Low Country Radio. Low Country Radio Sports Talk. We have Ron and Derek. The uh, play guys and the color guys for the uh Valos the wildcats on with us tonight myself charlie moon here and guys i'm, I'm looking over the Valos the schedule and last year y'all were overall eight and five three and one in the region and this year you're ten and two 
uh, overall three and one in the region as we speak right now. And it looks like both years you had a loss to Lee County. And this year, and, and I know you, you played Lowndes County, which is a 7A right across the uh, a, a rivalry school there in, in Lowndes County is the county of Valdosta. And uh, it looks like they come out on top of a big game there. But Lee County game, I want, I want to hear about this Lee County game because it was a 53 to 50 uh, ending and it looks like uh, Lee County won by a field goal. Am I am I wrong about that, or is that the way that ended? No, that they kicked the last second field goal. They kicked the field goal with no time on the clock. That was one of those shootout games that, if you talk to Coach Rod a lot, he'll tell you that he's he's never a fan of a high scoring shootout game. Being a defensive coordinator, and we made a lot of mistakes that night. We we turned the ball over. We didn't take care of it. And we came down to that last second field goal, and that game about halftime had a feel of whoever had the ball last was going to win that game. Whoever flinched last was going to have, you know, was going to win the game. Much like the Concord County game when we beat them early in the year, we beat them 50 to 49. Very similar game, and we had a game like that last week against Johns Creek, and Johns Creek flinched kicked the field goal, we drove down the field with 40 seconds to go and scored a touchdown. So it looks like uh, Lee County put you guys out of the playoff. Y'all were playing them to – nope, y'all played uh, the cooler last year to put you out of the playoffs, uh, I believe, the second or third round. And uh, But Lee County has a stout program over there. And where I'm going with this is – uh, two years, three years ago, they they put us out. And if you, any of them, I'm not saying you're going to, but if you win next week and 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 follow on through, will y'all have to face Lee County again in the championship game? I feel like Lee County is the best team on the right side of the bracket. They've got a big game Friday night, and they'll have another big game. You know, they face the winner of. Harrison and Houston County, and Houston County is the four seed out of Region 16A. All four teams from Region 16A are still alive, and there's never been an instance when all four teams from one region have made the semifinals. But there's a very good chance that that could happen this week if we take care of business. Houston takes care of business. Lee County takes care of business, and also Coffee, who is on the left side of the bracket with us takes care of business that very well could happen but some very good football down here in south georgia i understand yeah i know uh in your uh, itg preseason media days uh coach rodemaker made the comment you know he kind of feels like the championship this year is probably going to run somewhere through region one so you know if if that happens if you guys beat richmond hill and your other you know lee county uh lee coffee and house and take care of their business uh, you it's 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 uh, it's gonna most assuredly go through Region One. How how much of a beast is it playing in that schedule uh, through that schedule, and then and then how does that translate in your playoffs? It, uh, that's kind of an obvious question and answer, but but talk about that a little bit. Derek, you want to take this? Uh, I would I would say that it prepares you. Uh, if you're if you're the best, you want to play the best, and you find out really quick, very early. Uh, where you stand, because uh, the way Valdosta's schedule was set up this year, our, you know, as if Region 1, 6A is not tough enough, our non-region schedule consisted of Lowndes County, Colquitt County, and Tiff County, all 7A schools. So you find out really quick and really early, what number one, what you've got, but you're also battle-tested. You've had to deal with a lot of adversity. You've had to play some games where the, the team across the way, they may out-athlete you. And so it's going to, it boils down to fundamentals of, of execution with tackling and special teams and that type of stuff. So, but, you know, then you get into region play, which is, as it's, as it's worn out, so tough. Week in, week out, uh, you're going to have a great team across the field from you, and you, you can't just roll your helmet on the field and think you're going to win a football game. It takes execution and uh, preparation from your coaches and the whole nine yards. And, uh, but it prepares you. It prepares you for a playoff run, uh, and it prepares you for the grit and determination it's going to take uh, to come out on the, on top. I agree with you. I think iron sharpens iron. Then looking at y'all's schedule, Houston County, Coffee County, Lee County, Northside, Lakeside, man, y'all have played some stout teams. Coffee County is no slouch. 
whatsoever. Houston County's no slouch. We all know what Lee County is, but uh, you're exactly right on that. You hit the nail on the head on that. What a lot of focus has been on Jalen Rouse. I heard the coach talk about it last night. I heard heard him talk about it tonight. However, there is uh, something that I have heard nothing about, and that's our defense. We have a stout defense. Nathan Vickers, Shaquan Brooks, Timmy Fortson, John Donovan. There's a, a whole bunch of seniors right there. Well, Nathan Vickers is a junior, but they're, they've been uh, very crucial in all our wins. Uh, have y'all and the coach looked at the, our defense any at all, or is that uh, not going to be a problem? No, you, you know, when you talk to Coach Rod, you got to remember that Coach Rod started out defensive coordinator. So he's a defensive guy. He's going to look at stopping the offense and keeping points off the board. Um, coach Josh Crawford is our OC, and he's turned it over to him and Tate Rodemaker and all our running backs, and we got a lot of receivers, you know, the big targets to go through. But Richmond Hill is no slouch on defense. You can look at their record as far as I think they've given up 17.3 points per game all year and less than that in the playoffs. So they've really done good. But I can tell you I've got Tate Rodemaker in here in the truck with me. So if you want some questions for the quarterback, Tate Rodemaker, shoot. Hey, Tate, how you doing? Good, how are you? Doing all right. My, this is Charlie Moon with uh, Low Country Radio, and uh, Freddie Howell's with me. We're over in, uh, we, we handle play by play in color for uh, lowcountryradio.com over in Richmond Hill. Uh, you've grown a lot since last year, I think. I mean, I, I, I did play by play for Brad with the last couple of years. Um, and have you grown a, two or three inches since last year? I think I've grown one or two. Oh, okay. So not as much as I thought. Not as much as I thought. Um, you know, going back to, and I'm not breaking down X's and O's of a game you guys played last year against Bradwell Institute, but one of the things that I remember from that ball game and a lot of the game film I've seen is you have a lot of trust in your wideouts, and you, you got a couple tall ones, Jaheim Bell and uh, uh, Jaheim Bell, Sherman, a couple other guys, Roberts, um, or Bell, Trap, Sherman. You got a whole host of them. But here's one thing I saw. You have a lot of trust in throwing the ball up and letting them go get it. Not necessarily, you know, throwing fly patterns straight down the sidelines and just throwing them up in the air and, uh, and, and just kind of, I don't want to say get quote-unquote lucky. But, I mean, you see somebody on a post route or a flag route, and you know when you throw it in that area that your guys are going to get up and go go up and get it. Has that been something that you've noticed? I mean, how how simple does that make make it for you? Yeah, it, I've worked on it in the off season, and we got all our receivers are really fast, so it's pretty easy to hit them downfield when they when they got them beat. But yeah, those are my favorite routes. Yeah, and, and I don't mean I, I, I don't mean that you I, I don't mean by any stretch of the imagination that I'm trying to say you're just lucky because you got a bunch of good well, great wideouts. So that's not what I mean at all. But what I noticed was your trust. If you, if you had man on man coverage and he, that DB was there, you throw it over the top of that DB, put it in the right spot, and you knew your guy was going to get it. Um, how you know we we asked your dad a little earlier. Uh, how is it coaching your son? And I know he t- talked about how much he stays on the defensive side of the ball. And I know you guys get asked that question a lot. But what's it been like? Uh, it's, it's really tough. He coaches me harder than everybody else. But I'm, I'm glad he's not on the offensive side. That'd be, that'd be even more harder. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it's, it's been a good experience to have him as my head coach. Uh, throughout what, um, what, what schools have been looking at you, at least the top of the list? Uh, earlier last week, I had uh, Pittsburgh and Virginia Tech offer me. And I've been talking to Baylor and Northwestern. And obviously, I'm committed to South Florida. But, and I signed on the 18th of December. So okay. We'll okay. So you committed to USF, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, I like to ask a lot of great high school players this question so people listening can kind of get a grasp on what uh, great college players and, and, and high school players go through. Take us through an average, let's say, an average Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday during your week from the time you get up. What time do you get up? And just take us through that day. Uh, usually we have walkers in the morning, so I'll get up around uh, 6, uh, 15. I leave the house at 6, 30, go pick up two players, take them to uh, the walk during the morning. We have walkers from 7 to 7, 45. Eat breakfast, and then uh, we'll have weightlifting in the morning for an hour and a half, and film within the hour and a half also with uh, weightlifting. And then we go to class, get out of class at about uh, 3, 30, come down. Uh, we got a study hall for people that are failing classes until 4, 30. Then we start practice at 4.50, and we got practice from 4.50 to uh, I don't know, about 6.30, 7 o'clock. Then we eat, they feed us, and then we go home. And 
then somewhere in there you try to get some homework done. Oh, you're really tired when you get home, but uh, yeah. take shower and try to get some homework. Tate, I, I, um, I got if, one if you, question for go you. Ahead, Freddie. Well, what What's the atmosphere around the school right now? Y'all are in the playoffs, and uh, I want to know what the student body, how the atmosphere is. Is everybody hopped up and they're super excited about this game? And does the student body travel well? I know y'all uh, had a couple of buses went up to uh, last week's game in Jones Creek, and I didn't see any bus schedule or any buses coming over to Richmond Hill. But does the student body travel well with the team and the and the atmosphere around the school? What's it like right now? Uh, the atmosphere is kind of the same because they, they expect us to go to state every year, which is our standard to live up to. But uh, they travel really well. Our students, we have a student section at my office, one of the best in the state, I think. They support us really good, and they'll they'll travel. There'll be a twenty of them at least. Ron, Derek, do y'all have any buses coming over this week? I, I hadn't heard the bus schedule. Um, I, I, I'm not on Facebook, so I don't look at that. But I think they've got at least one fan bus sold out. But being just a three hour drive, and you know the fact that you don't have to go towards Atlanta, and I'm sure y'all know that as well. When you don't have to go towards Atlanta and get on 75, it's a big deal, and it's an easier drive to go east towards Richmond Hill and Savannah than it is to go towards Atlanta. So I feel like we'll we'll bring a good crowd, not off the travels well. I know the game streamed on streamed on the NFHS, but I feel like we'll still bring a big crowd with us and all I know of is one fan bus. Awesome. So guys, we all I don't know if y'all know, but the Richmond Hill Wildcats Stadium is not a super huge uh, stadium. And if you guys bring uh, a couple of fans uh, over here with you, it, we're going to probably be packing the house and uh, they need to be bringing some lawn chairs so they can sit on the outside of the uh, chain link fence that's uh, surrounding the football field. Uh, Co- Coach Rodden, I talked about that last night at our coach show. We were watching some film on Richmond Hill and we saw some lawn chairs or some, you know, you know, chairs that you see at the baseball tournament and stuff. So we actually told fans, hey, put some chairs in your car, you know, it's gonna be standing room only. So we expect a big crowd as I'm sure Richmond Hill is gonna bring a big big crowd as well. Absolutely. Our home side's been packed. But I think uh, Mickey Baines, the athletic director, and, and the coach and all has had some uh, more stands moved in. So I think we got some additional seating. Uh, we are looking at uh, building a new school, and this is a, was the 22nd fastest growing community in the United States a while back. So uh, we're going through some growing pains. So I hope all the football programs that come in here, they bear with us until uh, our Board of Education. We have a great Board of Education and uh, a superintendent, and they're all working diligently to get a new football stadium with a new school and all built. We uh, These guys are yep. wanting to uh, get out of their trucks and go eat some low country bowl. And so uh, let's let them go. And uh, all right, uh, yeah, hey Tate, what, what's your what's your first three most important things for your Thanksgiving meal? Uh, I like turkey, pork, uh, dressing, and then uh, green beans. Probably. Oh, green beans! I knew somebody was going to bring it up. Uh, green beans is like uh, the thing on my list that I always wonder. Uh, now you talking about green bean casserole or green beans? Uh, just regular green beans. All right, good, good, good. I always wonder why green bean casserole you only you only see it one time a year, and there's a reason why. Anyway, uh, th- thanks Tate, thanks Dirt, thanks Ron for uh, for joining us. Y'all go get you some uh, some of that Low Country Bowl, and we'll we'll see you guys on Friday. Good, we appreciate the time. Enjoy talking to y'all. Absolutely, have a All happy right. Thanksgiving, guys, and uh, we'll see you Friday night. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> The Local on 17 is the place in Richmond Hill to go for a fine dining experience at a casual price and great atmosphere. The Local on 17 offers USDA certified prime grade steaks and local day boat seafood. All steaks are cut exclusively in house. Visit The Local on 17 on Highway 17 in Richmond Hill, Georgia, just off I-95 at exit 87 minutes from Savannah. The Local on 17, where everyone is local. Low Country Radio would like to thank our sponsors. Palmer Chiropractic, Magnolia Coastal Properties, Citizens Bank, Richmond Hill Pharmacy, McDonald's, Little Caesars, Papa's Pizza to Go, Perfect Pools, and the law firm of Samantha Jacobs. Go Wildcats! Low Country Radio, broadcasting all your local high school sports and serving up good times and good music 24 hours a day. Woo-hoo! 
find us on the TuneIn app and crank it up.